Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Schmallen. In Star Wars, one aims to swing a saber like Skywalker or shoot from the hip like Han Solo. But when it comes to command, everyone wants to be the next Mithra Nurodo, or Thrawn, as he's known by his closest friends and associates. Today we're going to take a look at Thrawn and his very unique approach to the battlefield. We'll take a look at what steps he takes to make sure that his crew is ready for almost any scenario. The soldier in the field and the crew member aboard a warship inevitably sees a war from a limited perspective. Their goal is to carry out their mission or their appointed task and trust that their commanders are aware of the larger situation and the vast matrix of facts, positions, options, and dangers. Leadership is a role and a task that should never be aspired to lightly. Neither should loyalty be given without reason. Even if the primary reason is nothing more than the soldier's oath and duty, a true leader will work to prove worthy of a deeper trust. Mithra Nuroda. When piloting a single-seater snub fighter, the performance of such a ship depends on the pilot alone and perhaps the astromech in the back seat. Individual talent shines in these scenarios, but piloting anything larger than a snub fighter is a completely different experience. From the smallest gunboats to massive, mile-long capital ships, a vessel is only as capable as its crew, and their crew is only as strong as its weakest link. Thrawn started out his life in the Chiss Ascendancy in a relatively poor family. He became a merit adoptive to one of the major Chiss ruling houses thanks to his excellent performance while attending an academy. While Thrawn was probably one of the most brilliant analytical minds the galaxy has ever seen, he only seemed to either struggle or perhaps consciously ignore the social hierarchies and politics that were commonplace in every corner of the galaxy. This is actually one of the biggest mysteries of Thrawn's personality. On one hand, he's an individual who can easily figure out what another being is thinking by just analyzing their clothing and posture. Thrawn's even able to understand the mindset of alien beings only by looking at their culture and arts. He clearly has the mental acuity to understand the intricate dance that is Chiss and Imperial politics, yet at the same time, he seems completely oblivious to how those politics might affect him his actions. As an individual who has the best view of the truth in any given situation, Thrawn is seen as a dangerous individual by the political elites and constantly targeted. Perhaps Thrawn is so engaged in the various physical threats to his people that he just sees politics as something silly and perhaps even beneath his attention. What this does mean, though, is that Thrawn's own vessel always ran with a less strict political hierarchy. It didn't really matter what Chiss ruling family you were born into or what core world planet you're from. When you're serving on a Thrawn ship, it's all about merit and your willingness to improve yourself and learn. Thrawn understood the delicate relationship between commander and soldier and what it took to keep a vessel operating in peak condition. In practice, a soldier is supposed to follow their commander without questioning their orders. But all throughout Thrawn's career, the Chiss had to fight a ton of different preconceived notions about him. Whether it was the politics of the Chiss Navy working against him, or his youth and inexperience, or later on when he served in the Galactic Empire, their more hostile anti-alien policies, Thrawn had to win the respect of those around him by proving to them how brilliant he actually was. The thing is, he never took things personally. Even when others tried to make things personal, he would basically win them over eventually with his excellence and rationality. Thrawn would also spend a pretty remarkable amount of time speaking and getting to know each individual in his crew and their weaknesses and strength. Thrawn was able to somehow create a very open-minded and collaborative environment while still maintaining discipline, which is very unique on any kind of military vessel. Senior officers were oftentimes quizzed on what course of action should be taken even in the middle of actual missions. Thrawn would oftentimes help his officers through these scenarios by nudging them in the right direction. He was never punitive or unfair if someone got something wrong, and his lessons usually resulted in increased confidence from his officers and a strengthening of ship morale. These exercises helped Thrawn utilize his crew in a very efficient way. At the same time, the crew learned to think and react to things the same way Thrawn did. The main goal of any leader should be to make the people in their charge an extension of themselves. The gunnery officers should target things like Thrawn would, the TIE fighter pilots should fly like Thrawn would, and so on. 
An ineffective leader will just micromanage the heck out of any situation. This actually creates a lot more work for the manager and it also creates uh, some tension and stress between the manager and the person being managed. By creating a positive teacher and student relationship, Thrawn naturally creates the respect and trust the commander needs while giving his crew ample opportunities to improve themselves and see real life impact from their actions. This really helps the crew become more invested in the actual mission they're taking a part in. Now, before we continue this episode, a special word from our sponsor for today's video, Ridge Wallets. Ridge wallets are super sleek metal wallets that have a lifetime warranty. They're about the size of a credit card and can hold up to 12 cards and cash. It's honestly a perfect present for the holiday and it can honestly lead to some pretty life-changing things. Especially for those individuals who are carrying out very bulky and back pain inducing wallets. Check out the link in the description down below if you do want to check out Ridge Wallets. Also, we have a 10% discount using our promo code GENTECH, that's all in caps. Also, there's free worldwide shipping. Well guys, thanks for your patience, let's continue the video. Each culture is different, each species is unique. That presents challenges to the warrior, who often must ascertain from limited clues the strategy, goals, and tactics of an opponent. Mithra Naroda. While Thrawn definitely has a warrior spirit, at his core he's always been an intellectual. I believe what drives Thrawn is not just his obligation to his own people, but an innate curiosity about the world around him. And so when Thrawn approaches battles, he saw it as a game of skill and intellect. Now, because Thrawn's homeworld is located in the unknown region of the galaxy, this meant that the Chiss Defense Force was constantly battling new, unidentified Xeno threats. On many occasions, the Chiss expansionary fleet would make first contact and follow that up with an exchange of energy weapons. As a member of the Chiss expansionary fleet, Thrawn was constantly exposed to these types of first contact scenarios and it required him to become an expert in Xeno anthropology. He would take whatever information he could get from a new alien species, whether it was the design of their ships or a first-hand account from survivors who had encountered them. Thrawn's specialty was artwork. Just by looking at the motifs and focus of alien artwork, Thrawn could determine quite a lot about a species, like if they were more collective or individualistic or more defensive rather than offensive. This would give Thrawn a massive amount of insight on how a battle versus these enemies would actually play out on the battlefield. When Thrawn wasn't observing his crew, he would spend long hours in his office going over art samples so that he could more intimately know his enemy and destroy them. This is what really separated Thrawn from the rest of the commanders in either the Galactic Empire or the Chiss Ascendancy. Most officers are reactive and wait to adjust to enemy movements. Thrawn, on the other hand, comes into the game with an extensive knowledge of what both sides will try to do in the battle, giving him a massive advantage. No battle plan can anticipate all contingencies. There are always unexpected factors, including low stemming from the opponent's initiative. A battle must thus become a balance between plan and improvisation, between error and correction. Mithra Naroda. Because Thrawn spends so much effort making his crew independent of his orders, when the battle actually starts, he needs to do very little micromanaging. He basically gets the focus on commanding and improvisation. Thrawn's knowledge and extensive research on the enemy forces will help dictate the battle plan that his ship uses, but once the battle commences, he won't be able to devote time to each individual battle station. And so his crew is not only able to operate independently of his orders, they're actually trained to think just like him and act as if he would. While standing on the bridge, Thrawn remains calm and collected. His confidence is reassuring to the bridge crew and their trust in him cements that relationship as well. There will be times during a battle where Thrawn might see an opening, an opportunity, and order his ship to do something highly unorthodox, something that might seem stupid to observers who don't understand exactly what Thrawn is doing. But ultimately, a well-trained crew that trusts their commander will follow Thrawn's order without any protest or second guessing. Because after just spending one battle with Thrawn, every member of the crew understands that this chist is just at another level as a tactician. The crew understands it's their job to support Thrawn to the best of their abilities and carry out his vision. So actually Thrawn's biggest skill here is not his analytical ability or intellect, but it's really his leadership abilities. He's smart enough to understand that 
uh, being a leader is really a two-way kind of feedback loop. You have to get a lot from the people you're leading, but they also need to get something in exchange. And Thrun's always treated every member of his crew as an equal and open to their suggestions and their expertise. And I think that's what really separates him from a lot of the other career officers we see in the Star Wars galaxy, which is why he's personally one of my favorite characters in the entire Star Wars lore. Well guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think about Thrawn. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.